Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a, a, a problem that's actually a very common problem when you have the change in the temperature from the warm temperatures outside into the winter months. You'll turn the car on and all of a sudden that light's going to come up on your dashboard that's going to show what I've, what I've heard is a horseshoe. Uh, looks like a horseshoe with a little uh, exclamation point in the center of it. Or it'll come up like on this Honda right here. It'll come up with a tire pressure, TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system. So well, let me bring you in there. I'm going to show you what is going on with it and how we're going to go about correcting this problem. So uh, first thing we'll do is let's, uh, let's see what the problem is. This is what's going on with it. You'll start the vehicle up. And down on the bottom you see where it says TPMS, tire pressure monitoring system. It means something's going on with the tire pressure system itself. So I'm going to show you what you're going to do first, step by step, to, to resolve the problem. Alright, first thing you're going to do is you're going to come over to your sticker here on the door. Most of the time it's either on the door frame here or you'll find it on the door frame over here. Uh, in this case, it's right here, and you'll see what the tire pressure calls for, 30 PSI. This time of the year, I always make it a little bit more than that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to check our tires and make sure they're all at 32, just to see if there's a tire that's possibly low. So well, let's do that first. Okay, first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have yourself a good um, tire pressure gauge, whether it's digital or it's the old conventional style that you can purchase in any parts store. And you want to check the pressure in all of the tires. I always start left front and work around the vehicle that way. Now here we have 32.5, so that's in a normal range. And we're going to go around and we're going to check each one of the tires just to make sure that they're all in that area. Okay, so after checking Okay, so after checking all of the tires all the way around, we know that the tire pressure is in a normal range. We're going to set them all exactly right, because this one is actually 32, this is 33. We're going to raise them all up to about 34, just because of the temperature outside. But right now, we still don't know why that light is on on the, on the dashboard, because we did check all the tires, and they're all good. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get a tool now, and we're going to go around and check each one of the sensors to make sure that, that the sensors are all sending out their signal back to the, to the vehicle, uh, given it the tire pressure uh, reading. So let me grab the tool, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around to each one of the sensors, we're gonna check the reading on the sensors, and we're gonna jot them down just to make sure that we have all of the numbers, um, the sensor ID numbers uh, are coming up correctly. So what we're gonna do, is we know that this vehicle is a, uh, I'm going to hopefully show you this. Let's see if you can see this. Okay, first thing we're going to do, this is, a, this is the one that I use. It's a, a company called a Smart Sensor. And what we do is we just come into here and then we're going to select the vehicle. It's a Honda. And it's, it's the Honda CRV. So we're just going to go to the CRV. We're going to enter it. And now we know it's between 2007 and 2011, and uh, we're going to hit enter. And now what we want to do is we want to scan each one of the sensors to make sure that the sensors are working properly. So we're going to go up to that. We're going to scan each one of the sensors. So let me do that, and come on, take a, take a walk with me, and I'll show you what we're going to do. What you basically do is you hold the, the machine up against the tire right next to the sensor, and you enter it, you just press the button to enter it, and it'll come up like this. It'll show you the sensor ID number, it'll tell you that the battery is okay, the tire pressure, 
Um, okay, we're just going to jot this number down because I do keep track of all of these numbers here. So let me do that real quick. Okay, what I do is I just write down this sensor number right here, and once I write the number down, I just mark it down as the left front. And I know the pressure is 32.7, so we know that's okay. Tire pressure temperature is 30 degrees. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come back over to this one over here, and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go back now, going to go back, and now we're going to scan the sensor one more time. Just like this. As you can see, this is not detecting any sensor. So this sensor, something's wrong with the sensor. There's no, um, no signal coming out of the sensor. So now we're going to mark that down, and then we're going to do the rest of them just to make sure. Okay, so our left rear, we don't know what's going on right now. So now we're going to take a walk over, and we're going to do the other side now. Come on, take a walk with me. Hopefully you can see what I'm going to do here. We're going to do the exact same thing here. Okay. As you can see, this one has actually got a reading. That's the sensor number. I'm going to grab that paper. We're going to jot that number down. All right. Now, we're going to go up to the front, and we're going to do the exact same thing up in the front. So we're just going to go back. Let's see if I can just leave you right here. Yeah, you should be able to see right there. I just scanned the, uh, the right front, and as you can see, the right front is actually showing the sensor also. So we're just going to jot that number down too. Okay. All right, so what, what, what we have now is we have no sensor input from that left rear sensor. We're going to do it one more time just to make sure that there's no input from that sensor. So let's do it one more time. And uh, then we're gonna we're gonna take care of this problem. So come on, let's take a walk. Wait, where, where you going? At? Did you get dizzy? I did. Okay. So we're gonna go back one more time. We're gonna scan that sensor. Just like this. And again, we have no sensor detected. So most likely that battery is going to be no good. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this tire off the truck. Then we're going to make a new sensor and we're going to put it back into the rim. So, uh, all right, let me just pull that wheel off and uh, we're going to continue. But I want Okay, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to actually let the air out of the tire. You may remember me telling you about this, uh, this uh, Coates machine that I bought, the piece of garbage, baseline 200. Well, I don't know if you can hear it right now, but you can hear that air leak. This thing is still leaking. Coates still didn't call me back to, uh, to resolve a problem with their piece of equipment. So, just want to let you know about that, give you the update on that coach machine. Uh, so while that air pressure comes out of there, um, 
once that empties out, we're going to mark the tire where the valve is, so we put the tire on in the exact same position, so that way it's balanced and we don't have to rebalance it. Um, so, uh, all right, I'm going to break it down and we're going to go through this uh, together then. going to take that sensor out. So um, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to dismount the tire. I'm just going to take out the sensor right now. So I'm going to unscrew that nut right there. I'll bring you in a little closer so you can see. That's probably about 11 millimeter if I'm not mistaken. Now a lot of times when you try to unscrew these, the, the screw doesn't come out and the whole sensor rotates the, the stem itself. So let's see what happens. Okay, well this one is coming right out. So now we're just going to hold this so we don't drop it inside the rim. If we do, it's no big deal. We'll just take the tire off. that is the sensor. All right, so down in here is where all the ID numbers are. So uh, we're going to take this back over to the, to the uh, bench back there. I just want to do one more thing here. Make sure you take off the old washer that was underneath there because you will get a new one to put back on. You don't want to have the two of them on there. We're going to clean up this valve spot right here and we're going to go over to the bench over there and we're going to clone this new sensor. So. Uh, Come on, let's take a walk over. Okay, now, if, now we know for a fact from the other sensors that we scanned that it was a, uh, a sensor like this that we need. They have different frequencies. This one is a 433, and this one is a 315. So we know from scanning the other sensors that were a 315 um, frequency. So we're going to take this sensor and we're going to clone this sensor is then going to become this sensor. So, this is how we're going to do it. What we're going to do, we're going to just try this one more time. We're going to, we're going to try to, we're going to try to see if this sensor here woke up. Yeah, sometimes you shake them, you rattle them around, you warm them up a little bit, and it might start to work. So, we're going to try it one more time just to see. Now, you want to make sure that you're away from the vehicle, because you don't want this machine to pick up the sensor from the other side. So we'll just put it up against here. We're going to scan the sensor again. And as you can see, it still didn't wake up. So the battery in this is most likely dead. Okay, so we're going to just shut this off for one second. Now, now remember we wrote down those numbers before for the sensor, these numbers. We're now going to look for that number on this sensor here. Now obviously it will not be the same sensor. Let me get a rag and we're going to clean this off. We'll see if we can get a number off of here. So now we're going to manually input all of these sensor IDs. Put the sensor in here and lock it in place. And now we're going to manually enter the ID. So we're going to first put in the BF. B. F. Six Charlie. Six, Charlie, C, 
075. Now, before we do anything, we're going to make sure it's the right one. It's BF 6 Charlie 075. Now we hit enter. It's erasing the, the ID or anything in the sensor. It's ver verifying it. And now, as you can see, that sensor ID right there, we're just going to check it and make sure it's BF 6. Charlie 075. So now this sensor ID is now input into this sensor here itself. So the programming was successful. That's it. And we're just going to go back now. We're going to take this out. We're going to go back again. Now we're going to scan the sensor just to make sure. As you can see, there it is, BF6 Charlie 075. So now we just cloned. Okay, so now what we did is, let's take these off. The old sensor ID is now, this sensor is now obsolete. We put that new programming into this sensor here. Now we're going to put this sensor back into that rim, put it back on the vehicle, and if we did our job correctly, that light should go out. So uh, let's get over there. Let's put this back in the rim. I just want to point this out to you. Um, when you install this new sensor, you, you screw this down. You've got to be careful you don't snap it. I think it calls for... Uh, I think it is actually inch pounds that it calls for. Uh, let's see... Okay, it's an 11 millimeter, 35 inch pounds. So we need to tighten this down to 35 inch pounds. So we have our inch pound meter over here, and uh, we're going to continue back on that rim. So uh, come on, let's take a walk back over. Okay, now we did clean up that, uh, that hole underneath there, so we're going to put this sensor back in now. Never use the old stuff. Always make sure you use all the new stuff. Now when you unscrew this, this is exactly how it's going to go back on. You know what, let me just show you real quick. If you look at this paper here, well, some of us need glasses. See how it goes? The sensor comes through and both, both of your washers go on the outside portion right here and then your lock nut goes over the top of it. So you make sure you put it back on that way so you don't have a problem. All right. Okay, so we're going to take this apart now. This and this. We're going to put these on the side for now, right here. And this. And now we're going to put our sensor back in through the rim. And just push down on it. Washes over the top, screw the nut back on by hand, of course. I'm going to take this out of here. Then we're going to use our inch pound gauge. Now, if you don't have an inch pound gauge, you can do without it, but you don't want to snap the, uh, you don't want to snap it off.
Okay. So now we have it set to what it calls for. The 35 inch pounds is reset for, or if you have an, uh, a newton meter, you can, it's four newton meters. All right, so that's all set. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna inflate the tire and uh, we'll get it back on the car. So uh, let me get a, uh, an air shock and we'll fill it up. Now remember, we marked it here so we don't have to worry about rebalancing this tire. But we didn't take it off the rim all the way anyway, but just in case you had to take it off all the way, you mark it, you won't have to rebalance it. Okay, now being that it's so cold outside, I normally would fill a tire with a cold floor on the door, which would be uh, 30, um, 30 PSI but it's about 65 degrees in here, and it's about 10 degrees, 15 degrees outside. So I am gonna make this a little bit higher. I'm gonna make it 36, because if we go outside, we're gonna drop a couple of pounds. Sure. It's not leaking. Screw our cap back on. All right, let's mount it back on the car now. Okay, so we're gonna lower this, the lower the truck back down now, we're gonna put it back on the ground, we're gonna wash our hands, take it for a test drive to make sure that that light is off, and that we have no more issues with the tire pressure monitoring system. I will tell you this, if that uh, tire sensor went bad, this, this is no eight. Tire pressure sensors only last year, maybe five to seven years, that's it. So I, I am going to correct this problem today by changing that one sensor, but rest assured this vehicle is going to be back at a later date to have those other sensors done one by one probably. So, all right, let's take these gloves off, wash up, let's get the keys, the jacket, and let's take up a road test. So uh, come on, take a walk. Okay, this is the moment of truth. Uh, that should turn off after we drive for just a little bit now. Close the doors down first. Stop the light here, we'll wait for the light to change. We're going to take it for a ride down on the highway and we'll get it to turn off. Okay, here we go. And there you go. Light turned off already. All right, usually within like a block or two blocks, the light should turn off, which is exactly what happened. All right, let's get back to the shop and then we have a little bit we want to talk about here. All right, that's it. So. A lot of times when you put a new sensor in a, in, a, in a tire or if you readjust your air pressure, sometimes you'll have to drive it for a period of time, a couple of minutes to get it to turn off. Um, if you, uh, locally around town you can usually do it, but if you take it on a highway for, for a little bit of a run, usually within a couple of minutes it will reset. So if you have any questions or comments, you want to talk to me about anything, you want any information about that machine that I use, uh, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Okay, so um, a lot of times whenever you have a problem with these tire pressure monitoring systems, you want to always start with the easiest thing first. Check all the tire pressure all the way around and make sure it's up to whatever the specifications call for on the door. Don't forget, 
check the one in the trunk. A lot of times these, these cars today will have a sensor on the tire in the trunk. Also, I've run into that problem before where I check all the pressure all the way around and it still is a problem where it's showing up it's low. Look in the trunk and the one in the trunk has got the spare tire with the sensor on that. So don't forget to check all five tires if you have them. Um, so always start with the easiest thing first, tire pressure. After you check the tire pressure and it shows up to be uh, exactly where it belongs and it still doesn't turn off, that's when you would need a, a machine like this here to go around and to scan each one of the sensors to find out which sensor was actually bad. Um, sometimes it can be a real pain in the rear end because it may be an intermittent failure in the sensor, uh, which was the case with this one here. Intermittently it would pop up. Um, but um, luckily today we were able to pinpoint which sensor it was, um, and that's it. So uh, if you have any questions, you want to talk to me about anything, you send me an email. I'll be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. As always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.